Hi, welcome back to the Metal Lathe series. This is episode number six, where I'm assembling the lead screw components and mounting them to the main lathe body, and um, starting to assemble the full body of the lathe with the cross slide getting bolted down to the main ways and starting to align the two sets of rails. I used this piece of quarter inch steel as a template, and as you can see from the number of holes in it, this went great and I only had to do it one time. But once I finally did get it right, I used it to mark the hole locations for the bolts that will mount the cross slide saddle to the linear rail cars. Here I'm marking out the first bolt hole location, and then I'll use the template to get the rest of them. I'm using a sharpie just to mark a vague location so I can double check that none of my holes are going to be right on another existing hole. And then later on I'll go back and actually center punch those holes. But for now I'll just center punch the first one and drill this very first hole. I align the template with the actual rail cars themselves and then I set the saddle on top. I put a bolt through both the template and the saddle to get them aligned and then I'm using a uh, indicator and one of the rails that's now bolted back into the saddle, passing it back and forth just to make sure that that rail is approximately square to the main ways. I need to make sure that once I put the holes in for the bolts, the bolts will have enough play to square it up perfectly after the fact. And you can see after just a few minutes of trying this, I have it within maybe two or three thou over four inches. So now I'm going and I'm transfer punching from the uh, template straight onto the saddle. I'll skip over most of the drilling here, but it was pretty nice that I got a big gallon jug of uh, WD-40 and an old Windex sprayer, and now I've got a nice refillable sprayer for WD-40. The last row of holes are drilled and tapped for M6 bolts. These are going to go through from the underneath the flange of the linear rail cars and the bolts are going to then bolt up into the bottom of the saddle. The main reason for this is just because I was starting to run out of room, uh, but it also is nice because then these bolt heads will not be underneath the linear rail on that side. So if I have to undo them for some reason, I can do that without having to take off my top layer of linear rails. I kind of wish that I did this on the other side too because those bolt heads actually are underneath the linear rails, the row that you're seeing me drill at the top there. Um, but for now, I'm just sticking with what I've got. It slides back and forth, so I'm counting that as a win. Next, I tapped all the M6 bolt holes in the bottom of the saddle. I'd already checked once before, but it was great to put all the bolts in all at once and just see that it worked together. Unfortunately, one thing I realized was that the bolts on the bottom are actually really, really hard to put in, kind of working upside down without very much room. And uh, in the end, I actually had to go and cut down one of my other hex keys to get, a, get one short enough to fit into the bolts. You can see that the head was right up against the body of the lathe and I might end up having to come up with a better solution here if I have to undo these more frequently. After that I figured it was time to finally put the grease fittings on the rest of my main linear rail cars. It only took a second but I'd for some reason been putting it off for a long time. With the grease fittings on I moved right on and started working on the mount for the strong side of my main lead screw. I don't know if there's a better word for it, but the side that's actually taking the axial force on my main lead screw. I made it out of this chunk of cut up scrap uh, steel. It's like 0.9 inch, so I don't really know what it was originally. Maybe it was inch thick and it just rusted down. But I'm basically gonna carve out a little indent with the angle grinder so that way the lead screw fits down the middle and it's going to have bolt holes on both sides. You can see here with the lead screw fitting right in that little indent and now I just need two little extra shims on the sides to shim it up just a little bit higher. Make sure that the face mount for the lead screw fits vertically on the block that I'm making here.
Now that I've got holes in the block, I can use my transfer punch to mark those onto the actual steel inserts, and then I can drill and tap those holes. Now that the block is bolted down with the shims on top of it, I can do even more transfer punching, marking, and then drilling to put holes into the sides of the block. I didn't end up finishing this up for this video, but that'll be in the next one. With the block for the structural end of the lead screw done, or very close to it, I decided to work on the other end of the lead screw that doesn't really take any force. I just used a piece of angle and cut it down and now I'm marking out a little spot so that way the axle can stick through just a little bit. I'm just carving this out with the angle grinder coming in at an angle the best I can and then I'll go and file it and grind it to get it all the way. Even more hole marking, transfer punching, and then drilling. Trying to get these holes in for the face mount for the non-structural end and then it should be pretty much ready to go besides tapping and drilling the holes in the actual steel inserts on the lathe. And you can see right here I'm transfer punching for those holes, drilling, and then in a second I'll tap those and should be just about done on the side. I ended up deciding to just tap the face mount holes in this end of the lead screw. I wouldn't do that normally, but it just seemed like a very easy way to attach this. And since it's not taking any force anyways, I figure it couldn't harm too much. I can undo it pretty easily and shouldn't really affect anything. So for now, I'm just going to stick with this. The last piece that I put together, I used some more scraps of uh, old rusted steel. These are going to be basically washers for the top of the headstock. I've got bolts that are going to go through the entire headstock and bolt down, connecting it to the body of the lathe, and I figure that the nuts on top would do better to be against steel rather than against pure epoxy granite, so I'm going to have these with holes going through them, just as basically giant washers on top, and I'm going to have an epoxy joint between them and the actual headstock, just so I know for a fact that they're getting good contact area and there's nothing that can easily compress in there. That's actually why I cut these slots, just to give the epoxy a little bit of a mechanical connection. I know it won't really be taking any force besides compression, so it probably doesn't need this at all, but I also kind of wanted to see how easy this would actually be if I need to do this in the future. And overall, it really wasn't too bad. It only took maybe an extra two minutes of putting in cuts with the angle grinder. With all these little projects, I'm sure this week it was a little bit harder to follow exactly what the lathe was looking like, but this is it with everything at least set in place, not really bolted down. Uh, next week I'm hoping to get everything bolted and mostly aligned. It's really exciting to see this project actually starting to look like a lathe. So um, I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching.